under attack, uh, will be here with us to discuss uh, the book. David Cole, Anne Beeson, and Stephen Schulhofer are the three authors of the book who will be here. That event will also be held in this conference center at 6.30. On the 21st of June, the Ambassador of Indonesia will host a briefing and special cultural evening at his embassy for World Affairs Council members and their guests. On June 28th, we will host Josh Rushing, the author of Mission El Jazeera. The former Marine Corps captain and spokesperson at CENTCOM headquarters in Doha, Qatar, is now the military and current affairs correspondent for El Jazeera English language television channel. The membership table will be available in the lobby after this presentation. For members joining this evening, we have a special premium gift for your membership. As always, and as a courtesy to our speaker and to your fellow audience, please take a moment to turn off your cell phone at this time. Afghanistan is strategically placed between the Middle East, Central Asia, and the Indian subcontinent. For centuries, foreign governments and foreign armies have fought to control it and tried to conquer it. Each in their turn has been defeated by the rugged terrain and fierce resistance from the groups living there. In October 20, in 2001, U.S. and NATO allies attacked the Taliban government, driving them from power in Kabul and setting in motion a series of events leading to the ratification of a constitution, election of a national assembly, and the election of Hamid Karzai as president in 2004. However, while U.S. attention has been drawn to Iraq in the past four years, the Taliban has staged a comeback of sorts. Huge areas outside the capital are controlled by the warlords, and Afghanistan still produces approximately 90% of the world's opium crop. In April 2006, the Council of Foreign Relations reported that, quote, the world thus far had put Afghanistan on life support rather than investing in a cure. Afghanistan has the potential to be a disastrous situation if intelligent measured steps are not taken, end quote. Tonight, we will hear a briefing on the state of security and reconstruction efforts underway from a man who is perhaps uniquely qualified to help us understand the situation and needs of Afghanistan today. Prior to his appointment of, uh, uh, as Afghanistan's ambassador to Washington in December 2004, Ambassador Shawad served as the presidential press secretary, chief of staff, and director of the Office of International Relations. He was instrumental in drafting the foreign investment laws and in developing the constitution. Ambassador Chawad was educated at the Afghan French Lycée Istiklal and School of Law and Political Science at Kabul University. In 1986, he settled in the United States and earned an MBA from Golden State University in San Francisco. Please join me in welcoming His Excellency Saeed Chawad.
from the Cold War or the Global War on Terror. If you look at the, the history of the recent history of, 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 the, of the world, even not, uh, not only Afghanistan, from the War on Terror to Cold War, Afghanistan has always played a role in regional stability or the, the destability in the region. Afghanistan is the original front of the War on Terror. That's where you were attacked in New York and in, in, in uh, many other places. And it remains and it keeps its significance. <coughs> and uh, five, six years after 9-11, we still we see that the threat of terrorism is imminent from London, New York, Washington, Tokyo, Madrid, anywhere, Bali, Bombay, Kandahar, Kabul. We are all facing the threat of terrorism, and we continue to face this. That threat, on one hand, creates actually a serious uh, threat for regional stability, for global security. But on the other hand, it also united many people across the world to fight this threat together. Right? Just to give you some statistics, the international consensus in Afghanistan is very strong. It's not only the U.S. that's participating in Afghanistan. ISAF, the International Security Assistance Forces, is completely now led by NATO. And 60 countries are providing funds to in the reconstruction process in Afghanistan. 36 countries have troops present in Afghanistan. 41 countries are just helping train the Afghan National Army and National Police Force. Uh, 16 countries have uh, provincial reconstruction teams uh, that are helping not only with the security but also delivering some basic services in many parts of the, in many provinces in Afghanistan. An important asset that we have in Afghanistan is the popular support and the goodwill of the Afghan people for the presence of the international community and for uh, very active participation in the political process. And this is an important asset, particularly when we live in a troubled time, at a time that the terrorists, the extremists all over the world are trying to build walls. The Afghan people are trying to build bridges. The country is a bridge, and the history of the country has been a bridge of. And as much as it's an asset to have these all countries involved in assisting Afghanistan, but if you just look at the color code on the map, it is also a challenge. We have, when you have 16 different countries, having PRTs in the country, when you have uh, 36 countries having troops in Afghanistan, it is the, 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 the issue or the task of coordination is, is very difficult. We have, as you know, NATO for the first time is, is, is stepping out of its traditional sphere of operation, which was basically Europe, and was basically defending itself within its boundary against an invading army. Now it's getting out, and it's going to place a fourth place like Afghanistan and is fighting the war on terror, it's a new, completely new mission. So some of the security challenges that you're facing and I've been talking about uh, has to do also with the issue of coordinating so many different players, so many different stakeholders. <coughs> and today we, we face security challenges in Afghanistan. We, we have, last year we, the, the, the number of the suicide attack in Afghanistan increased uh, almost uh, 400 percent. Uh, 400, uh, 4,000 Afghans have lost their life in Afghanistan uh, due to the terrorist attacks and terrorist activities. Uh, suicide attacks went up 600%, I'm sorry, but uh, from only 27 in, in 2005 to over 139 in 2006. And this is a new phenomenon in Afghanistan. Unfortunately, we were forced for many years to, to fight the Soviets and others in, in, in the history of the country. We never had suicide bombing. We had 200,000 U.S. Uh, Soviet soldiers in Afghanistan, a lot of them in big cities, but there was no one single incident of suicide bombing. While we fought it very hard. Uh, this is due to the infusion of the extremism into the Afghan society that took place for many years. Uh, a foreign element that foreign money and also foreign ideologies play a very role in it. So this year we have had close to 60 suicide attacks already in, in many parts, and particularly in big cities, in Kabul, in Kandahar, many other cities. Cross-border infiltration into Afghanistan has increased 300% uh, the past years. And we see more and more uh, sophistication as far as use of IEDs and, 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 and uh, methods that's being implemented generally first in Iraq. They are being copied and are taken over to Afghanistan. We are witnessing a growing cooperation between Taliban and the drug lords in Afghanistan. And uh, there was a lot of talk uh, up, to a couple of, up to a couple of weeks ago even about the uh, spring offensive of the Taliban 